What goes great with a plate of wings? Well, how about a side of centers? Perhaps one of the most important positions on the team, one that hockey team is desperately crave and overpay for. Just look at the Dubois trade. Could the Jets perhaps get both wings and centers at the trade deadline? We'll talk about all of that on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. You're locked on the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Good evening, friends, and welcome to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on all of your favorite podcasting platforms and YouTube. Doing so, of course, is always free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. Most of all, though, we just love and appreciate your support. On tonight's episode, like I said, we we were talking yesterday about spicy, spicy wings and how the Jets can acquire players that fit more of the perimeter style. Uh, obviously, guys who are, are your exterior forwards and perhaps some of your best finishers. The Jets had a lot of options, a lot of price tiers. There were some additional wingers, though, that I thought were worth covering because some of these guys span all up and down the price range. Let's talk about a couple that I didn't have time for, but that still intrigued me uh, in a couple of different price brackets. We'll talk about the cheapest ones first, though. Uh, Nick Obey Kubel for the Washington Capitals, who's been a really solid, I would say, functional middle six to bottom six player, uh, has continued to carve out a really effective role as a guy who can be sort of a versatile jack of all trades. He doesn't really do, <clears throat> you know, a ton of like high end scoring. And if you're looking for an elite playmaker, you're perhaps not going to find it. But if you're looking for a guy who could potentially upgrade Winnipeg's bottom six, provide a physical four checking presence, and also have a pretty reasonable shot. I think you could do a lot worse. Albe Kubel is, for me, one of the guys who might be uh, perhaps worth a look if you wanted to perhaps change out Mason Appleton out wide. I think, you know, as much as Appleton has had a hot start to the year, the, the last several months have really gone stone cold. And Appleton just doesn't play a game that I feel like perhaps fits Bone's style as much as I wanted it to. He does generally have good chemistry with Lowry, but I feel like upgrading uh, and giving uh, you know, that third line, a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more scoring punch, or perhaps just a player who will drive the net a little more aggressively would do wonders for how they play. So Obey Kubel has some underappreciated skill. He's had really strong seasons in the past. Uh, you know, this year, obviously it's been, I would say a modest scoring rate, but in past years, he's gotten close to 20 points. Again, if you were to get him for like a pretty low round pick, I don't think that there's anything particularly crazy there. Uh, but I think for the Jets, you'd have a guy who would be a nice, versatile bottom six player, probably for your fourth line. Now, the question is, does that really move the needle for the Jets? Probably not. I think Abe Kubel would mostly be like a depth insurance kind of trade and not really what I'd be targeting uh, unless the Jets were really sort of looking for like a bottom of the barrel, a cheap bargain price player who they think could project to have a more important and prominent scoring role. But I don't think that would be Albe Kubel's thing. And if we're looking at players that sort of fit this category, I'd actually be a lot more interested in Matthew Joseph. I've talked about him before because the Jets have actually inquired about Joseph, if I recall correctly. Uh, Matthew has always been a little bit underappreciated and with the Senators, he's actually had an all right season so far, you know, 23 points in 36 games. It's actually a pretty decent amount. He's seen an increase in his ice time as well. What I think is really impressive though, is that almost every single point he's had this year has come at even strength, which for the Jets is awesome because we know their power play doesn't do jack crap, right? The, the power play is really sucky. So if you have a guy who's scoring even strength points and is getting you, uh, about two thirds of a point per game. I, I really feel like that is crazy value. And with um, it, with with Joseph, he's also got another season, and he's very affordable cap hit wise. You're looking at a guy who's currently on pace to have like a fifty odd point season, and you know for a player who's uh, gonna cost you well under five million, I feel like for two seasons that's pretty amazing, right? A season and a half in this case because he's already played half of his first year. But for the Jets, I think he'd be an ideal third-line upgrade and somebody that, again, 
would probably be within Winnipeg's price bracket, especially if they're not looking to break the bank for a huge rental. Now, if the Jets are really starting to feel ambitious and frisky, and they think they can potentially lure Pavel Buchnevich out of St. Louis, that would be where we're starting to get into the more dreamlike tier, but a tier that I could see Winnipeg potentially touching. Uh, Buchnevich obviously has been one of um, St. Louis's best players. He was an absolute menace when he was with uh, with the New York Rangers, and he just continues to be an excellent transition player, a great playmaker. He hasn't exactly hit like crazy numbers this season, uh, relatively speaking. But, you know, even if he's not like a point per game on a bad Blues team, you've seen him do that before in previous years. He's actually been over a point per game in his last two seasons with the Blues prior to this year. So there's a really good chance that if he comes to a much better team, a squad that has legit high and finishing talent and playmaking skill versus the Blues, who have generally been a lot more low event this year, Butch could potentially hit you know, a point, like maybe a 1.1 point per game pace or something crazy for the Jets. And it'd also be a huge boost for the power play. Now, like I said, the one kind of qualifier that comes with Booch is that he's got another year and he's got like a modified no movement or no trade clause of some sort. So let's not get it twisted. You just, you'd still have to convince him to leave. But I feel like if your option is St. Louis with a team that's probably uh, needing to tank more than anything, and you want to go cup chase in perhaps the last years of your prime, you could do worse than the Jets. And I think Winnipeg has built a really good winning culture. I think this team has a very strong, tight-knit familial feel, and that could go a long way to perhaps papering over some of the Let's be honest, locale challenges. I know that everyone always talks about Winnipeg as not being the most attractive place for players to get traded to, and I, I can understand that. But I think if you have a team that has shown a track record of success and that is, that is proving that it can be a true contender, the Jets might be able to lure a lot more talent to this team than you think. I think a lot of people tend to they really focus in on the no trade, no movement, no movement clause, and they don't think that there's any sort of possibility the Jets could be an attractive destination. But I, I think the Jets have done enough this year to rewrite that script. We've already seen players committing to Winnipeg long term. I think that is a sign that the, perhaps the the sands are shifting in our favor. And sure, you could argue the market conditions were really convenient for the Jets to just somehow get the best goalie of this generation under a, a huge long term deal. But I'm telling you there's there's more under the surface here. I think, you know, seeing Shifley and Nino commit, I, I feel like that's a sign that good things are coming to this team. And I really hope that that continues to be the trend. So Booch might not be as out of reach as it looks right now. Another guy that could really be interesting and also has no trade protection is Travis Konechny. And he's got some positional versatility. He can play down the middle and he can also play out wide. Uh, I know that his numbers this year perhaps don't look as impressive as maybe last year's, but for a guy who has shown that he has a great, great talent for scoring, is an absolute pest, kind of like uh, Perron is, but perhaps um, with a few less suspensions, Travis would be an awesome player and somebody who would immediately slide into Winnipeg's top six. He'd be an unholy menace on this team. And again, if you're looking for somebody who can just naturally boost your power play scoring, this is the guy who could probably, uh, again, add you know more playmaking skill, another finishing talent, and perhaps even boost the first power play unit to league average, right? <laughs> I know that that's such a low bar to clear for the Jets, but Let's be real, right? A league average power play in this team is absolutely cooking. So if Travis can get the Jets anywhere near that, let's go. It's also worth noting that he shoots a really high percentage for much of his career. He's averaging like a 12% shooting rate, which is pretty great and tells you that this dude has legit finishing talent. And again, he will be expensive, but you know what? If ever there was a year for the Jets to just sort of not necessarily throw caution to the wind, but be willing to consider going all in, this is that year. I feel like Winnipeg is in a great window. They've got another season after this with most of the team under contract control. If you got to pay up, go for it. This is the year to do it. And I think Winnipeg, Winnipeg can come out ahead with some quality players. Now, aside from wings, right? Like I said, what goes well with a side, like a side of uh, wings? You've got to have your centers. You've got to have the core down the middle. And for the Jets, I think finding the right center has been a little bit of a challenge. I've got a couple of candidates who I think could slide into Winnipeg, perhaps even be a little bit underrated, and maybe even help the Jets save some in assets if they can get them on discount cut rate trades. We'll talk about who these centers might be in just a little bit. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at Jace Medical. 
I know we come to sports to, to escape from some of the crazy realities of daily life, but I just wanted to talk about something relatively serious and how you can be prepared for all of the craziness that life throws at you. According to the FDA, pharmacies are running out of antibiotics like amoxicillin right in the middle of what has been a pretty crazy bacterial outbreak. We've had tons of respiratory stuff. I know I've personally had, you know, things over the last couple of months on and off. And if you don't have the right prescriptions and stuff, it can really suck. I can't imagine a more helpless feeling than knowing that myself or somebody I care about doesn't have access to the basic medications they need because the supply chain is taking a bit of a hiatus. But you know what? Jace Medical is here to help. They offer the Jace case, which is a pack of five different antibiotics to treat a long list of bacterial infections, including UTIs, respiratory infections, sinusitis, skin infections, and so much more. It's stuff that could happen to any of us and probably already has at some point this year or even last year. If you want to prepare yourself better, visit jacemedical.com and complete your physician's encounter. It will be reviewed by a board-certified physician, and your med medications will be dispensed by a licensed pharmacy at a fraction of the regular cost. It's never been more important to be prepared than right now. Go to jacemedical.com and use offer code Locked On to get $20 off your order. While we're at it, I also did want to shout out our friends and partners at FanDuel, especially as we are rolling into what should be a, a rather interesting Super Bowl. Uh, speaking of which, happy Super Bowl to all who celebrate from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. If you're like me, Super Bowl Sunday is all about scoring the best seat on the couch, grabbing your favorite football snacks, and placing some super bets. Now look, as a Ravens fan, like I said, this is a tough time of year for me. I'm still not over uh, the game against Kansas City, but it is what it is. I've come to accept it. And I, like you, can come out with a couple of big wins, maybe even two to three if I play my cards right. All I have to do is bet and win my bet of either five dollars or more and i can get two hundred dollars in bonus bets as a new customer and what's great is you can bet on all sorts of stuff around in and uh during you know super bowl 58 whether it's which players will score a touchdown how many points are going to score and so much more so visit fanduel.com slash locked on to sign up right now that's fanduel.com slash locked on make every moment more with fanduel an official sportsbook partner of the nfl Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we are talking about uh, forward ranks and some players that the Jets could potentially trade for. And we've basically covered, I would say, the bulk of the wings that I was really interested in. There may be one or two stragglers that I haven't discussed, maybe some targets I've ignored. So if you feel like there's somebody out there you want me to evaluate and maybe talk about Winnipeg's odds of landing said player, of course, just drop them in the comments below, and I'd be happy to cover it on a future episode. But I want to take a, a bit of a, a change and move to a different position. Let's talk about centers, because the Jets, I think, have been talking a lot about, you know, the play down the middle and who could probably slot in, especially seeing, you know, the absence of Shifley and how that has impacted this team. It, it definitely has shown Winnipeg's lack of elite center depth, which could be a problem come playoff time. Before we dive into the potential list of players the Jets should be suitors for, just wanted to let you know about something really cool the Lockdown Network has done. We have launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with our local experts and our national shows covering every league. Subscribe to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube for the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Now, diving right back down the middle of the center list, pun intended, uh, let's talk about some of the top names that have been linked to the Jets or perhaps rumored in other areas. I've already talked about Elias Lindholm for now, so let's let's move on to perhaps returning to Casey Middlestadt. Middlestadt's been one of those players who I think had a really unusual trajectory in the NHL. He had like a really big World Juniors or something several years ago. <laughs> And there was this expectation that when he got to the NHL, he'd be like this elite top six center. And then he promptly had like four or five years of scoring uh, either below 25 points or well below 25 points. He's had some injury issues. And, you know, in general, I feel like his career has kind of been modest. Uh, you know, this is a guy who has been probably closer to like a half point per game, which I think for a player of his caliber is actually really good. Uh, I think sometimes he tends to get a lot of stick because he was drafted eighth overall and taken really high. And perhaps it was a little bit too high of a draft pick. But look, 
you have to evaluate a player for what they are and what they've become. And Middlestat right now is having one of the best seasons of his career. And it's not like it's a thing that's suddenly out of thin air. Last year, he posted almost 60 points in 82 games. This year, he's at 42 and 49. And there's been a steady progression in both his defensive responsibility and his ability to create shots on goal and scoring chances. Uh, you know, this year, he's really getting a lot of ice time, too. He's starting to push closer and closer to first line ice time. And I really feel like he's deserved it. Uh, he shoots at a pretty good clip around 12% or so throughout his career. He's got a great eye for for passes and stuff he creates lots of chances down low in the slot and you know he's a smart player and with him being only 25 he's got a two and a half million dollar cap hit that'll be obviously prorated down once the trade deadline rolls around he's also somebody who lives not far from uh winnipeg having been born in minnesota he'd be coming closer to home when it comes to trade targets i feel like middlestat might actually make the most sense among most of the players the Jets would be into. And with Bones, I think Bones would also be okay with playing him because he does actually win a fair few number of face-offs. Uh, I hate that this is kind of the one consideration I really have to take into account with this sort of thing, but let's be real, Bones definitely has a, a bit of a an, an eye for face-offs. Whether I, I feel like it's a little bit too strong of an eye is my own personal opinion, but let's just say that Middlestat checks off enough boxes to where I feel Bones would probably still trust him. It'd allow you to perhaps slide Nemesnikov back out to wing on the third line, maybe bump Appleton down to the, the fourth line. I feel like there's a lot of things that this potential move would do, and it gives the Jets a legit sick, sick, sick one-two punch between Shifley and Middlestat. You could argue that you might even have two first lines of quality there, right? If you have, say, I don't know, any sort of combination with like Connor, Shifley, and Velarde or Connor, Shifley, Ehlers, it really doesn't matter whatever combo you have up there. And then a second line with like Perfetti, Middlestad, and somebody like, I don't know, again, Ehlers, Velarde, I don't even care at this point. That's an amazing, amazing top six, tons of skill, and a lot of high-end finishing talent. So the Jets would definitely not be short of uh, options here. And Middlestad might actually resign with Winnipeg. Uh, it would be expensive. But look, if you're if you're making a play for a big player and you're going for it, I really can't see why you wouldn't try this, uh, especially if middle stats open to an extension. So something to keep in mind there. If you're looking at a player who's already signed and has somebody uh, that I've I've actually had an eye for for a while, even though you know he he's maybe not the the sexiest name. Uh, we've talked about him on I think previous episodes. Nick Schmaltz is still out there. He's at a pretty decent age of 27. And while this season has been a little bit more modest than I think, you know, previous years we've seen from him, you're looking at a guy who for the last couple of seasons has been close to a point per game. He's a really good top six center. And I think he would also check off a lot of boxes for what Winnipeg wants in terms of a natural finisher who could also boost the power play. The thing with Schmaltz that is probably going to be a bit of a ding against him is that he doesn't win that many faceoffs, which with Bones is not a popular thing. And I again, I hate to say that it is a major consideration with this coaching staff, but they have kind of allocated ice time based on simple stuff like that. So for for Schmaltz, uh, you know, you almost wonder if he'd actually play as a center. I don't know how often he's ever played at wing, but if he doesn't win enough faceoffs, he is not going to earn uh, Rick's trust, and that could be a bit of a knock against him. But assuming that it isn't, you know, Schmaltz has a couple of seasons after this. His, he expires after the uh, 2026 season, and at a little under six mil per year, for a guy who could potentially be a point per game center for you, that would be really, really good value. I guess the question is what Arizona wants to do and whether they're still thinking they're competitive. It's a tough call, right? They're in a really tough spot. They're in a very hard division, and I don't really see a way for them to really be that much of a playoff threat. So if I'm if, I, if I'm the Yotes and I'm not, but if I was, I'd still probably consider shopping some of our bigger trade assets. But I also know that they've got a lot of uh, conditions that they need to meet, and you know, they're in a weird spot. So I get it if they don't want to make a move. One last player that we'll talk about before kind of tabling the center discussion for tomorrow. There's a guy out there who I feel like continually doesn't get a lot of attention, uh, and he's actually a very good player, and he's one that I've thought about in the past as like a, maybe a second or a third line center. I'd be interested in taking a run at Alex Venberg again. The only thing with Venberg is that he's not particularly cheap, and you know you look at his offensive totals the last few years, 
he doesn't really tend to score a lot aside from a couple of early seasons with the blue jackets where i think by by virtue of the role that he was given he scored quite a bit venberg has generally been more of the two-way center type with a decent pass uh and and certainly an eye for his teammates but perhaps doesn't really have a notable offensive presence in terms of goal scoring himself venberg would be a bit of a risk and i feel like i wouldn't really rank him that highly on my most sought after centers. I feel like if the Jets were able to get salary retained and perhaps uh, strike a deal with, you know, Seattle, there's a chance that it could work. Like I said, I'm not really ranking him particularly highly on my list of, of players that I'd be after, but you know, his cap hit is reasonable for one last season. I feel like the Jets could maybe get a mill saved on there or something akin to that. And it would be an interesting risk if you're looking for like a cheap Lars Ellery type. Uh, but again, in terms of centers that really make a difference, I don't know that Venberg necessarily does that other than just push further, you know, other players further down the lineup to really bolster your bottom six. So some stuff to consider. But before we kind of uh, head off tonight and, and kind of table some of our other centers that I'd love to get to on tomorrow's episode, I thought it'd be worth talking about how the Jets might prioritize stuff at the trade deadline because Winnipeg has a number of different directions they can go, and I feel like there's no real wrong answer necessarily. It's more about what you're willing to sacrifice and exchange for stability in other areas. So we'll talk about that in just a moment. Before we go any further, though, I do want to shout out our friends and partners at Factor. Get started on your resolutions with Factor so that you're ready for this new year because they've got ready-to-eat meal delivery that's super convenient and takes all of the stress out of the grocery stores, prep work, and cooking fatigue. Instead, get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options that have keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and more considered in their recipes, they've also got, you know, stuff like 55 plus add-ons to make your meal exactly how you want it. They want to make, you know, sticking to your resolutions as easy as humanly possible. They offer also offer loads of snack options like breakfasts, uh, smoothies, juice, snacks, and more to keep you going throughout your day. And if you need something that's a little bit more upscale, they also have the Gourmet Plus option for those very special occasions. Factor also wants to fit your schedule, so if you need something that's a little bit more tailored to your specific needs, they can offer plans that go anywhere from 4 to 18 meals per week, and if you need to pause, no problem. They want to make it easy and convenient for you, so if you're ready to take all of the guesswork out of trying to fix meals for yourself and find a, a solution to all of the extra stress that cooking comes with, you can head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50 and you'll use code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off your order. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50. Go right now and get your 50% off offer. Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Every day, thank you so much for rejoining us on tonight's episode as we are evaluating a whole range of, of players. We've talked about wingers. We've covered briefly a couple of centers from our list of players that I'm personally interested in the, the Jets acquiring. And now it's time to focus on uh, the priority, right? What is the order of how the Jets should approach this? And I think it's a, it's a really tough question because Winnipeg has a fair few number of needs. But, you know, in terms of importance... I think each week that we've gone through the season, especially the last few weeks, it feels like the priorities shift here and there. You start getting ideas. Maybe it's a winger. Maybe it's a center. Maybe it's a defender. And that's where I think the Jets have uh, a couple of really interesting options. Do they go after one big player who completely changes the rest of the lineup, but perhaps limits your ability to add other pieces at the deadline? Do you go for more variety, right? Filling in a couple of different spots a couple of different positions to give yourself optimal flexibility with your lineup. I think that they have really good choices in almost any category they choose, but I think if I have to choose one particular direction, I think that they should prioritize a top six center. The center depth for this team, it's not bad, but I think you notice that when you lose somebody like Shifley, and, and look, this would be a massive impact for any team that had a player of Shifley's caliber. Make no mistake, everyone would be ailing from the loss of Mark. He's a really good top six center. He's a first liner. He's one of our most creative players. And it's funny because I say this about a guy who might be 
considered the third best player on his line. But I promise you, when you actually see this team without him and how it elevates the other centers uh, further up the lineup, you can really get a sense of his impact, perhaps in an understated way. His offensive skill and acumen really isn't matched by too many players on this team. He's really good at what he does, and without him, this team starts to really struggle to generate offense at 5v5. So with that in mind, I really feel like the Jets should kind of go all in on a really big center. I think they can actually add a quality winger of some sort, even if they were to choose you know, the center route, right? You go for Lindholm or Middlestad, whichever option you're interested in, maybe even a Schmaltz or a Kerfoot or something. Some of these names you'll hear on our, our next episode and, and you know why they might be really good candidates for the Jets. But overall, I think the approach should be to uh, add a center and a wing. I think if you can get a really quality center who moves the needle and maybe a depth winger who can add you know tertiary scoring to this team, that'd be fantastic. And I would I'd be willing to go with some bigger assets. This is where I think like a Daniel Sprung with a modest cap hit could be a really valuable asset. But the problem is he's probably not going to be cheap, right? You try for like a Sprung in a middle stat, you might be mortgaging a huge portion of your team's future trying to do that. And I don't know that that's necessarily the best option. It might be worth trying to find a player um, perhaps in the you know Matthew Joseph tier who is underrated who's not like insanely cheap cap hit wise, but you could probably do a little bit of retained salary on and, you know, maybe even swap a player back that would cheapen the price for you, say an Ayafalo or an Appleton or something, a legit quality player to upgrade. And then, you know, the Jets get a nice cost controlled asset who's been producing at like a two thirds point pace. And then you factor in middle stat, who's been an absolute monster and would easily slide into Winnipeg's second line. I just feel like these are choices that would give the Jets uh, perhaps the best flexibility. So for me, you know, go for a big center and then look for a winger who can add that tertiary scoring. And I think that would be the best approach. I've seen people talk about adding a defender. And look, I the thing with the Jets is that their defense, especially as a team, is actually pretty good. Whether it's top of the league you could argue maybe there's a couple of teams that are technically better i know blue line wise the jets don't have the best on paper defense and it has clear limitations when it comes to offensive ability but if heinler recovers back to his full health and is able to do what he does best you know it might not be as tricky of a situation to deal with as imagined as it is the jets have a fairly serviceable blue line one that can do most of what winnipeg needs Heinola would certainly add a mobility end, and I just don't know that there's a lot of, of back-end skaters who would really move the needle for the Jets that would also allow them to upgrade it forward, right? If you trade for one of the players that I'm going to talk about on a future episode uh, for, for your blue line, you're probably not getting that middle stat or, or some of the higher-end names. So as I said, you're always going to have to give up to, to, to get something, and I think a cost-benefit here is that if you're upgrading on, on the forward end of things, you're looking for more goal-scoring prowess in offense, and that is what wins you games. Defense can be nice, but the Jets already have one of the best goalies out there. They've got an extremely tight team defensive structure, and they're very stingy, right? So instead, look at how you can make this team's power play and 5v5 offense even better than it already is. I think that's the way to go. That's my approach, and I hope that uh, you'll give me your thoughts in the comments below or at my social medias at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore uh, on Twitter, LO underscore Winnipeg Jets on Twitter. But for tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have. Like I said, there's even more centers and some defenders to talk about on tomorrow's episode, so stay tuned for that. But as I said, for tonight's show, that is going to be all the time that we have. Thank you so much for making us your first listen of the day. I always appreciate appreciate your support. I'll see you back here tomorrow. Don't go anywhere. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe. And as always, have a great night, and go Jets go.